There it is. There's a, a leaf swirling around in there that had been caught in my silt sucker tube. And at first I thought that maybe this was, well, you can see there's some other stuff in there too. At first I thought that maybe this was uh, going down against the, like it was rotating down against the bottom of the barrel or sagging or whatever. And it was um, just pressing against the bottom of the barrel and not sucking anything up. But it turns out there was a leaf in there. So I'm gonna try to get that out somehow. Uh, I might have to get my hand wet. You know, it's warm water as you can see. Because I think that's messing with my results here. And taking a look at the intake there, it looks to be pretty clear and free. And I'm not getting a whole lot of leak by, so right now, you know, this is uh, the creek bed here and I'm not seeing any water flowing. Not like just down there. So clearly most of the water is being collected by that, which is good. Uh, the only problem I might have here is that the, the holes are too big and I left it uncapped there. I don't have a cap for this three inch. I just stick, stuck a rock there, but apparently it's sucking in leaf debris. Now keep in mind, this is just a prototype and I wouldn't have that problem up the hill because I'd be collecting straight out of the, the spring head and there shouldn't be any leaves in there. It would only be light silt, which is the purpose of my silt sucker. That's why I call it a silt sucker, not a debris sucker, because it should only be sucking silt. And then also because it gets a little bit of debris buildup, uh, just swirling around in there, some of it will go into the intake pipe for my, my three quarter there and that'll foul up the nozzle for my my water jet. So I need to make a filter for that, <clears throat> get that leaf out. And also I'm gonna put this silt sucker back in, but I'm gonna cut like a, a V notch in the tip so that it will rest all the way in the bottom, but not be fouled by sitting on the bottom. These are fantastic little tools to have. I have a link in the description for this one specifically. It's a PS50, just a Bosch 12 volt. It's a fantastic little thing to have, but at times it's underpowered and the battery just doesn't last very long. But for little things like this, it's fantastic. I have one of these spinny tip deburrers. Works great for these sort of holes.
Here's a good example of the silt that I'm getting in the bottom of that. Now first I'm gonna put the filter on to see if it has like a noticeably reduced flow. There should be a little bit of a reduction, at least from the fitting. But this is goes this goes from a three quarter to one inch. So the one inch here should not be restricting it very much. There's still be a three quarter inch fitting on the inside that I have to take out and replace it with this. Okay, I just replaced this three-quarter with the other three-quarter and it doesn't seem to have reduced very much. Now we'll see if this reduces it at all. And if th this doesn't, then that means that this is sufficient, at least for now. I'm gonna put this on and then reconnect the hose and see if this actually sucks up any silt because there should be enough silt in there for this to suck it up. Okay, now having done those modifications and reconnecting the pipe, it seems that my my jet of water down there is not flowing, so let's go and clog that. Okay, it's clear there's a flow restriction somewhere. I'm gonna bet it's silt somewhere down in this bottom portion of the line here. It's really odd that it would be varying in flow like that. Okay, it might be an airlock. Let's try lowering it down. I didn't want to move it, but I guess we'll have to. Okay, I have it set back up approximately in the same location. There's my ice collection. I guess I can try to explain why there was an airlock and what that is specifically. So when I, when I disconnected it up there, a lot of water, all the water drained out, or most of the water drained out and filled the pipe with air. But this was still open. So when I reconnected the water up there, all the water that was in there tried flowing past all the air, but the buoyancy of the air was keeping the water from pushing it down. So the only water that was coming through was essentially like the air pockets acting as bubbles going up through the pipe and there's just a little bit of water on the bottom of the pipe that was flowing through and that's what we saw trickling out here. I lowered the, the end of this pipe another like two feet and that was enough to get enough flow where those bubbles were finally pushed down, where the flow overcame the bubbles. When I installed my big system way up on the hill there, I know for new viewers, this is actually quite steeper than you might be able to see. So when I connect my big system, I need to make sure that there's zero places where bubbles can collect naturally, that all the bubbles will want to slide on out. And I'll have to have the valve shut off 
when I first connect the pipe up there. And that'll allow all the water to trickle down and the bubbles to trickle up. So I shouldn't have a pipe that's 100% full of water only. And when I'll have a, a gauge down here showing me the pressure, I should be able to see, oh, I don't remember what pressure it would be. Whatever the pressure of 255 feet of water would be. And if there's any bubbles, then I'll see less than that. So I'll need to make sure that like the, the pressure gauge is at a set reading before I turn anything on. And that'll make sure all bubbles are out. And I'll need to be very careful to not suck any bubbles into the system because that'll really hurt efficiency. Now, looking at my barrel, I can see that it's not spinning very fast, but I can see that it's clear underneath the exit of the pipe there, which is closest to the intake, which is good. And that the silt sucker is over the silt. Now, I had a leaf caught on here and you might say, well, I'll put a bigger pipe on. But two things about that. First, in my system, I won't have leaves, like I just said a little bit ago. And the second is that I want velocity in that one inch pipe. With a small pipe, I'll have higher velocity and I can use just a, a smaller amount of water as wastage to move the silt. If I put a big pipe on, I'll have to waste a lot of water to get the right velocity to remove silt. So this is only a three quarter. I bet I might be able to get by with a half inch. And it might be such that in the final system, I'll have to shut it down periodically to allow the silt sucker to flow and suck any silt out that would uh, collect in here. And by shut it down, I mean I would shut off a valve um, probably at the bottom of the turbine. So that would fill this up, fill up the collection barrel, the silt filtration barrel with more water. Another thing that might help is to put some sort of conical bottom in the bottom of this. And that makes sure that all the silt is collected by the, the drain, the overflow, the silt sucker. Uh, parting comment here, I have water flowing through the overflow of the silt sucker there, which means I have enough flow for another pipe to be installed here if I ever want to like put a tiny system down here at the bottom. Assuming when I connect the spring at the top to a pipe, I'm actually not collecting all of the water and I'll still get some like melt water and other water in here. So I could potentially have a second tiny little hydro system down here good for maybe 20 or 40 watts.